half if sea fishing. We just took the long walk out onto the Hoyle Bank. We're going to be targeting flounder today. Uh, hopefully we'll get a place as well. Uh, we'll go through the gear, the rigs, the set up, the baits and uh, we'll get fishing. Today I'm going to be on fixed bull reels loaded with a uh, 20 pound line, Shimano XCS and a uh, Teclon Gravel. Uh, rods today, Seaglow Match and Scratches GC1s. Going to be trying the glass tips on these today, seeing what they're like for flounders. They're uh, sitting well, the tide's looking good. We'll go through the rigs, the baits, and we'll uh, catch some fish. First rig out today is the one up, one down rig. Four ounce bomb. Got snug lines of about 18 pounds. They're about three foot. I'll show you the uh, hooks I'm using today. Got a seaglow bait stock, seaglow attractor, and I'm using the size one chenou hook in case there's any bass around today. Uh, rather than your traditional flounder hooks, I'm on a surf beach. I don't usually uh, target flounder with with uh, chenous, but I am doing today just in case there's any bass running about. Got a little rolling bomb lead, about four ounces. I'm going to be casting them out about 30 to 40 yards, and letting the tag come in over the bait so there's no need for big casting today let the tide do the work at this mark the next rig we're going to be using today again four ounce bomb got an arrow clip from Seaglow on a wishbone rig which is clipped down for distance so when the whole rig's up it's about four foot rig releases and then I've got a flowing trace of about four foot with two hooks on the end and a little wishbone don't make my wishbones, that's how I make them. Double hook, double base, hopefully this will get some place. Baits for the day, just going to be using razor fish, black lug and strips of mackerel and black lug. Anything combined with the black lug today. Uh, only three baits today, that's all you need out in the oil bank really. So I just like to keep my baits nice and simple to start off with some razor fish. Just take the air razor out the shelf. I'll just take little strips of razor fish. Put a little strip onto my baiting tool. I'll then take a black lug. Thread that on the other uh, side of the baiting tool. Just thread that through. And then basically I'm just going to bind that together with some bait elastic. So I like baits to be quite large out on the oil bank. It's quite a feature in this area. There's only a lugworm about at the moment so for the flounder to feed on. Uh, shrimp, that's about it. So I just tend to black lug, razor fish. Pull off the bait and tool. Black lug and razor fish. I pull it off the bait and tool at this point because I don't want the baits that long. We'll chop that size bait in half and that'll be two baits that will be going out. I'll just thread me hook on so my hook's at the bottom. Put a little bit more bait elastic around that. Move the attractors down to the base. And that's kind of the base I'm going to be using. That's kind of the base I'm going to be using today. So there's a little glow bead attractor on the back. Black lug and squid, bury the hook in. The flounder will place should gobble that down. The next bait I'm going to be using, just a strip of mackerel. Depending on what the fish are going to be feeding on today. Some days they want the razor fish, some days they want the mackerel, so you've got to mix your baits up here. Even straight mackerel, straight black log, you've just got to keep changing your baits so you find what the uh, fish are feeding on. 
bind that together. So I'll just bind the bait together, keep it nice and neat. And then whatever I have here, I'm gonna get two baits out of. So we'll have to be fishing straight black lug, black lug mackerel, black lug razor fish. We'll just keep going until we find what the fish are after. We're about half an hour away from low water now, so the fish should start to feed as soon as the tide starts to flood. Again, I'll just chop the bait in half. And I'll put some squid, black lug, razor fish on the top hook. And I'll put some black lug and mackerel on the bottom hook. So I'm not using massive baits out here at all, I'm using quite small baits. Put me a tractor down. So again, that's about the size of the bait I'll be using today. The first bait's going out today, one up, one down rig, black rubber raise of fish. We're going to be casting out about 30 yards. We're going to be walking back with the tide, we're going to let the tide do the work, so we're not going to be casting any baits any further than 30 yards. By the time we walk back, the tide floods in, these baits will be about 80, 90 yards out, and then hopefully they'll find the flatfish as they move in on the feed. All the flatfish at these marks are very close in, don't overcast on them and you'll find the fish. So we'll just get this one plopped out. Again, just a 20 to 30 yard cast, let the tide do the work at this mark. Hopefully we'll find out where these flat fish are sitting. Then I've got a wishbone rig going out, which is two baits close together. Hopefully this will pick a flounder and place up as well. Just using black lug and razor fish on that as well. We'll get this, this one clipped up and we'll get it cast out. So this one sits on the seafloor, so quite a long snug line to it, which should flow around in the tide as it comes in. So the next bait going out, clip down with bone rig. This one will go on about 60, 70 yards and sit a little bit further out so we've covered all the areas. So what I'll also do as well, I'll make some pre-ready-made baits ready, uh, because when I'm on the move I'm not going to have time to bait up because I'm going to be wading through channels uh, as soon as this tide starts to flood. And I've also got a spare tray set up here as well, so I'm ready to unhook a fish and get one straight back in. Steve's doing well on the pump, got some uh, fresh blow lug coming out now for a bit later on, so hopefully that will give us the advantage later, some fresh bait. I'll show you where we are today. We've got a uh, we're on the Whittle, which is in between the River Mersey and the River Dee. Out to my left, we've got uh, the back there, Chris Statting, Land now, and the River Dee. We're on the Whittle, it's in the middle. To my right hand side, we've got uh, Liverpool and the River Mersey. Uh, New Brighton over there, Four Perch Rock. So we're on the Whittle, which is sandwiched between the two. Uh, it's a big long surf beach, about two mile long. Um, there's no real hot spots on this beach, you just got to find the channels where the flood beds are and follow the channels back in as the tide floods. And hopefully we'll find some flatfish today. The tide's just starting to turn now, there's plenty of air uh, colour in the water today. Flat calm, should be good for flatfish hopefully. 
Tides are starting to flood. We're going to be moving back with the tide, as I said. That's why we cast short at this mark. And this is the back bank we're going to be moving back onto. So we're constantly moving back all the time with the tide as it floods in. We've got two banks up the top, so you can see the way it banks up, slopes off. We're going to end up on the back bank all the way up there. We'll also the casting range as we go along, but we're going to let the tide do the work for now. chunk of a flounder here we're gonna get this one measured you can see on the match measure here we covered it at 44 centimeters really good size place but actually weigh this one as well there's the weight so just on two two pounds two pound one ounce I'll give it two pound one ounce So that's why we come out today. Nice air flounder there, 44 centimetres, two pound one ounce, beautiful fish. Let's, uh, let's get him back in. Here we go, chunk of a flounder, first catch. And there we get this one back in now. You can see the air first channel starting to flood in now on the bank we're on so we're going to be moving back onto the back bank and then we'll be fishing into this hole here i'm going to switch my fixed spools out for uh, my multipliers now put a grip lead on and try and get it further out because the channels are getting further out now so class it in close there's not going to be any fish we need to put one out now about probably 80 90 yards to get into the back channels where we were before Happy with that for the day. 
Uh, we're on top of the tide, fish has not really kicked in at all today, so uh, we're going to call it a day. The wind's just swinging in for the southeast, making it fishing quite difficult, rod stands are starting to blow over, etc. So, uh, starfish sea fishing, thanks for watching, I'll see you again.